Hi and welcome to Digital Rack Gear where we bring you reviews and tips to do with rack gear for music production and today we're talking about the analog domain or something that would normally sit in the analog domain and that is compression. There are in my view two fairly clear exceptions to the analog rule when it comes to compression because for a lot of people compression really rocks in the analog domain. So for me, it's when you've designed a patch in a multi-effects processor like DP4, for example, and you've used a compressor in that, and it becomes integral to the sound, the sound generation. The other exception, in my view, is the digital dynamics processor from DBX. And this is a piece of equipment you may not have heard of before, so today we're going to have a look at what this has to offer. So let's have a look at this uh, on the front and back. Uh, on the front we've got two uh, left and right input level uh, controls and output level controls. Uh, and we've got a meter button that uh, allows you to select for the, the LED meter up here the input and output levels, um, depending on which way you have the button selected. Uh, there's a, a really great display uh, on this, uh, then a jog wheel for controlling parameters, and then a number of buttons uh, which are function buttons and allow you to move between pages. It does have pages uh, to navigate in order to make uh, parameter adjustments, but there are buttons, dedicated buttons for each function. So there's a limiter button, for example, a compressor button, deesser button, and so on. Uh, and then you've got a power power button over uh, here. The, check your unit, uh, what voltage your unit is, make sure it uh, matches your supply. Uh, on the back, as you can see, we've got balanced uh, inputs and outputs in both the Canon and, uh, and uh, TS variety. <laughs> we've got MIDI, so it's uh, recallable in that regard. Uh, and then we've also got some digital inputs and outputs and uh, we'll speak a little bit about those. Um, as you can see, it has uh, some SPDIF or RCA, and of course SPDIF will carry clock with it. Uh, the uh, AES EBU would normally be accompanied by a word clock or BNC connector, and as you can see, that is missing here. So uh, that is something to be aware of if you are married to clock, uh, and that would make you uncomfortable then uh, then that may be it may have been a limitation here. Maybe they should have actually put a BNC connector on it. So I'll put up on screen uh, what sample rates, etc., are supported with those formats. Uh, but effectively, fairly straightforward, and the fact it's got MIDI makes it recallable. When you switch it on, the uh, DDP will open up to the last preset, uh, and you've got uh, I think about a hundred presets in here. Here we go, hundred. Navigation on the unit is dead easy. Uh, it's uh, basically uh, using the program button to select and move between presets. There are uh, a lot of stereo linked and also D-linked uh, uh, presets. This one is called the finisher. Uh, it's like a mastering uh, setup uh, where you've got compression, EQ, gate, compression, de and limiting. So it's the whole box and dice. Uh, but there are other presets where um, uh, you'll have uh, channel 1 and channel 2 instead of being left and right being treated separately. So you've got uh, channel 1 here for low strings, channel 2 for high strings for example. Uh, and this is um, uh, channel 1 here on cool kit is uh, fat kick on channel 1 and uh, ringing toms on channel 2. Now, so that there, are, this is uh, you know, there's good examples here, and there are the, in the presets there are um, really pretty interesting examples of how to use the unit, uh, and basically simply uh, select the channel you want to look at. In this case, I'm looking at channel one, and then you can actually hit, uh, hit any of the function buttons to look at compression, sidechain EQ, de-essing, limiting. Uh, 
the expander and gate and compression and so on. So you just uh, each function buttons there allow you to check the function and then you move to the page to look at the different pages available. So the compressor, compressor has three pages that you can look at. Uh, look, set the compressor on or off, over, easy and auto on page one. Page two has threshold ratio and gain and page three has attack hold release. That's uh, examples of the pages under the compressor uh, button. Uh, Sidechain EQ, set the EQ on or off. As you can see, there's quite a lot of a uh, little diagram here showing what the EQ settings are. And as you go over the pages, you've got bands one to three uh, with uh, the frequency, Q and level. And of course you can both add and subtract. Uh, so this one has some fairly aggressive minus nine dB at uh, 25 Hertz. So more of a high pass. Well, well it's more a bit of a low shelving cut. Anyway, so there's uh, there's examples really easy to uh, really easy to to navigate. Uh, it's also got a bypass button, and then on the utility side of things, it uh, allows you to adjust the contrast. There's a sample rate that you can choose as well, uh, and a bunch of other fun options here to do with uh, S uh, SysX dumps and so on. An excellent piece of gear from DBX, underrated. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Digital Rack Gear. Uh, the DDP, if you see them, they are actually not expensive. Um, because a lot of people think that effectively a plug-in will do what this can do, then they're not actually going for a great deal. I picked this up quite a number of years ago for around $400 Australian. That appears to be about the going rate for these still. So why would you want to buy one? So this is made by DBX. And DBX have decades of experience with compression and limiting. And this is basically all of those decades of experience in a digital box. So in my view, you're getting a lot of value for really very cheap in this box. It also has a heap of functions, equalization, compression, and so on, in the one unit. Does it have a sound? Not particularly, not like a character compressor, but from a function perspective, I have found this extremely valuable and it's really easy to use. Um, the only issue I've ever had with it is when it kind of bricked itself, came up with a checksum error, and I simply used the uh, factory reset button pushing uh, selection of buttons, which I'll, I'll pop in the description below. Uh, if you ever see that on yours, it is actually a simple matter of hitting those buttons and doing a power up and it will reset to factory. So it's, it's, it's been robust, reliable, easy to use and highly functional. So I, I rate it quite well, uh, even though I have a range of analog compressors to use, this is still a good value piece of kit. So if you see it around, do give it a thought and consider whether it might work for you in your studio. If you like this episode, please hit like and potentially subscribe. We'd love to be able to keep in touch with you. Please add your comments in the description below and I look forward to bringing you more content soon. Until then, keep tracking.